By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are looking at a game between a robots player on the left and a counter burn player on the right that has splashed in some white, by the way. So it's not just uh, blue and red. And this match is played at the Knights of Thorn Old School Championship. And this is actually round number four. And as we can see, there's a pretty good opening here by the robots player with that first turn Suchi and a plateau by his opponent here. And there's an attack for six and there's a lightning bolt. And I think that's always the risk with those Mishra's factories when you're playing against uh, white or red, or in this case, even both those colors, that your opponent has a pretty big chance of having that lightning bolt or that sword to plowshares. And losing a game, or losing a land, I mean, early in the game can be disastrous. But let's see what's gonna happen here. So there's a Chaos Orb on the table, and he's passing turn here. So he's already on 11. So maybe that Tsuchi can do some more damage here. There's the attack. And there's a Psy Blast. And that means that he goes down to 8 because Psy Blast, uh, Psionic Blast does 2 damage to yourself as well. But this is interesting, playing that Chaos Orb, seeing that your opponent is tapped out, meaning that, he, meaning that he can now take care of that Chaos Orb. So that's actually a pretty good trade here. And when you're ahead, you want to trade those Chaos Orbs, that's no problem. But here's the Surrender Pafrit, the powerhouse from Ara Arabian Nights, a 3-4 flyer for just 3 mana. Of course, the downside is that it does 1 damage to you during your upkeep. And, ooh, he's going all out here, playing a Brain Geyser for 3. And again, it's good timing because his opponent doesn't have enough mana for a possible counter spell here. Going to 7. And there are some possibilities here. He can swing in here for 5, and that's exactly what he does. So the Robots deck player goes down to 11. It's a quick game, but it's a pretty tight game. The players are very close. And both players can still win here. Copy Artifact over the Sapphire, followed by a Time Twister. And there's a Counterspell with the Mana Drain. Ay, 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 ay. And then you're thinking, oh, I wish I didn't... I wouldn't have wasted my Copy Artifact on that... Um, Mox, but obviously the idea was to play the time twister afterwards and just get a whole new hand anyway but that didn't work because of that um, mana drain and look at what he's doing now cracking the lotus to play a sarah angel and look at that air force and all of a sudden yeah that's game oh and that went very very quickly um how that game kind of shifted and uh, that's uh, a win here for the counter burn deck with that uh, big splash of white i guess and interesting to see the robots deck in action and i'm looking forward to see game number two here so let's um let them sideboard we're gonna fast forward a little bit and i'll see you back at game number two game number two is about to start with the robots player to play with the yellow sleeves who's on play after losing that first game and the player on the right with the counter burn deck with that white splash is now deciding what cards he wants to get rid of because he has taken a second mulligan here and they're playing according to the London mulligan rule. So in this case, and you can see it, him doing that right now, he draws seven cards and then has to put two on the bottom because he mulliganed twice. So only five cards in the end here. Mox Pearl here now, the game has started. Let's see what's gonna happen next. Tapping here for a mana vault. And what are we gonna see next? <laughs> he seems to be a little bit hesitant. The Black Lotus here on the board. So that's a crazy opening here already. But what is he gonna do with all this mana? That's of course the big question. Six mana, and there's a mind twist. So that's a mind twist for five. He loses his entire hand. So, I mean, has he already lost this game? Has he already lost the second game? That will mean that we're going to see a third game. But from now on, if you're the counter burn player, everything now is bonus because you're mulliganing twice and then there's that mind twist. That's just disastrous. And here we can see that Suchi hitting the board after that workshop. And to make matters worse, there's a library of Alexandria. His hand is pretty empty though, but he probably has the time to just sit back and get those cards back. He is taking damage there from the Mana Vault, 
Remember, his workshop mana cannot be used to untap the mana vault because you can only use it to cast artifact creatures. And he's already on 12. He kind of needs a miracle here. And there's another attack going to 8. There's the Abyss. Of course, a nice combo when you're playing with artifact creatures. And he can now play the Flying Man just as a charm blocker. Buying himself some time. And what can he do? He's on 8 life. I mean, if he wins this one, it's like a miracle. And he has enough mana to untap the mana vault, so he's not taking any damage anymore. And he's now on 4. Needs that miracle. It's not happening. So this game was done very quickly. And just an insane opening with that mind twist. Just crazy. Mulliganing 2-5 is already worse enough. But then having a turn 1, discard your entire hand, all 5... I mean, just that just you know slams the door in your face. So um, short game, but a great game, and it's now one one. So we're going to the decisive game number three. Game number three. So the counterburn player is on play here. The decisive game is one one, and as you can see, I haven't fast forwarded this third game because both players play fairly quickly, and you know this is the decisive game. So I thought. Let's give us some more time to actually look at the plays. And this is a fantastic opening. I mean, Mox Sapphire, Mox Ruby, uh, Mishra's Factory, and then in um, Surrendip, Afrit. So, a great opening here, a 3-4 Aggressor. And let's see what the um, robot player can do. And it, it looks like... He cannot do a lot. He's just playing an underground C, a beautiful underground C, but it's just an underground C. And that's why I personally really like white. And you can just pay, pay a swords to plows, uh, play a swords to plows here with one white mana, and you, and you're just rid of the the whole threat. Or of course a maze of if. And there's a soul ring. So look at the amount of mana he already has, and he can put quite some pressure on the board here. He can hit him for five. But he seems to be thinking, so maybe he has something in his hand that requires a lot of mana. Okay, he's just attacking here for 5. Well, actually for 6, because he can pump it with the other Mishra's Factory. So that's 6 damage already. And look at the difference here in board state. There's a Dark Ritual, and there's a Suchi. So that's pretty nice, but obviously it's not going to stop this Flying Surrender Perfreet. It is going to stop the Mishra's Factories, at least if it'll stay on the board. And there's an island, meaning meaning that he can now counter, so that's not great. It's going down to 11. And this is the decisive third game of round number four at the Knights of Thorn. The old school tournament in Deventer, the Netherlands. And actually the uh, biggest old school tournament in the Netherlands and the oldest that I know of. And let's see, what can he do with the Suchi? I mean, if he attacks, he's just going to block. Okay, he decides to attack. Maybe he has something in hand. And the opponent is saying, you know what? I have enough life. I can take the damage. And here playing another Suchi. And there is a counter spell. And that's... Oh, and that's the problem with those counter spells. If you get a counter spell you know you're going to get in trouble because you're tapped out. So that means you're now going to take 7 damage. More even, because there's another Mishra's Factory. So that means that he can now deal 8 damage, and, and he'll go down to 2. And then he needs a Miracle. And that's difficult when you're playing against Counter Magic. Actually, okay, yeah. So he's on 2 life. What can he do? Needs a board wipe here. But that's hard in old school. That's actually not too bad here. But the problem is that flyer. And that's what he says as well. Okay, that's the game. Wow, another short game, but very entertaining match as a whole. So that's 1-2 for the counter burn deck. Uh, well done. And it was an, uh, an interesting match to look at. And an interesting um deck from the robots player as well the choices that he made and the cards that he plays with showing some of the cards that maybe he boarded in 
Um, oh, and there we see that counterspell for instances, obviously meant to deal with instance and interrupts, obviously meant to deal with those counterspells from the opponent. Uh, but that's the thing with sideboard cards. Sometimes they can be really decisive and sometimes they can be quite useless for the simple fact that you're not drawing them or that they're not there when you need them the most. Uh, for now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you'd like to see more games, you can check out the videos that are appearing right now or you can have a look at our channel. If you're not a member yet, you can help us out a lot by joining the channel. Um, leave a like, leave a comment, curious to hear what you think about these decks. For now, thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>